Hi, welcome back. In this session, I'd like to revisit an investment judgment I made just a couple of months ago on short selling Apple and Amazon. For those of you who might have seen that session, let me review. I looked at Apple and Amazon right after they got to a trillion dollar market cap each, and I concluded that both companies are overvalued. I sold short on Amazon for the first time in 22 years and I so and I put in a limit sale, short sale on Apple at $230. Two months later, it looks like I've been vindicated, right? So you think this session is going to be about me crowing about how right I was? Well, you're going to be wrong because taking a closer look at the numbers, I've concluded that I just got lucky. I was lucky to be at the right place at the right time just as a correction hit the market and was focused primarily on tech stocks. So let me review my September valuations. In September, when I valued Apple and Amazon, I estimated a value of roughly $200 per share for Apple and about $1,255 per share for Amazon. And I was pretty open about the fact that I'd made a bunch of assumptions in these valuations, that I was telling a story about each company that was my story, not necessarily the story. In fact, I tried to capture how uncertain I was by running simulations on both companies and I came up with distributions of value that illustrated how wrong I could be. If you take a look at those distributions, they're much wider for Amazon where I faced more uncertainty than for Apple, but both stocks still look significantly overvalued. I followed through on that valuation and, and I did sell short for, at you know, Amazon at 1,950 and I my limit sale of Apple go through at 230. Now, two months later, well, at least it's not a happy ending for people who bought the stock, but at least from a short sale perspective, it looks like a pretty happy ending on both because both stocks are down substantially. In fact, they've recovered a little in the last couple of days, but they're down significantly since the September, the, the September valuations. Amazon dropped as low as 1420 somewhere along the way before bouncing back and Apple dropped to below $175 early last week. Now, when I sold short on Apple and Amazon, I also put in an automatic limit order buy to cover my short sales. And I'll talk a little bit about why I did this in a few minutes. But those limit order sales were at 205 for Apple and 1,412 for Amazon. You're saying, where do you come up with those numbers? Those numbers happen to be the 60th percentile of the valuation distributions I'd come up with for each company. So again, I'll come back and talk about why I used the 60th percentile. So when Apple hit 205, which was about four weeks after I took my short sale position, so I basically held the stock for about four to five weeks, it, it closed, my position got closed out and the stock kept going down to 175. You're saying, fancy timer you are selling so early and we'll come back and talk about that as well. Apple I got uh, with Amazon I got tantalizingly close to my limit sale, limit order sale which was at 1400 I'm sorry limit order buy which was at 1412 but since it hit 1420 and then bounced back I'm still short Amazon. Now, if you think about my investment judgment that investment judgment for Apple gave me a profit but Clearly, I left a lot of money on the table because if I held on and covered at 175, think of how much more money I'd have made. And with Amazon, it is entirely possible that by not selling, by not covering my position at 1420, I've left a lot of money on the table that Amazon might never get back that low. So here are some, some broad lessons I've taken out of this experience. We're often taught to take lessons out of our losing investments. Why not take lessons out of our winning investments? So here's the first one, and this is something I've done for a long time, which I did for Apple, uh, for Apple and Amazon, that I might as well revisit. I used, I used autopilot rules on both the buy and the sell side of these transactions. Let me explain. When I valued Apple on September 21st of 2018, I valued Apple at about $200. The stock was trading at $220. Since I already owned Apple at that time, I sold my shares and then I was very specific that I would that I would sell short on Apple if the stock price got up as high as 230. So right after that post, I put in a limit order to sell short Apple at 230 if it hit 230. You're saying, why put in a limit order? Why not just wait for it to get to 230? Because I know myself too well. I love Apple as a company. I know that if the stock had gone to 230 that I, and if the decision had been left in my hands, 
I would have found a reason not to sell short, maybe, you know, put it off for a few days. So I put in that limit short sale simply to take the decision out of my hands. I also put in the limit covers at um, at the 60th percentile for both stocks, again, to take that decision out of my hands. So you're saying, why the 60th percentile? I was being internally consistent. I like to buy stocks if they're below the 40th percentile, if they're at least 10% you know, undervalued. So if I'm willing to buy something, if it's 10% overvalued, I need to be willing to cover if it's 10% overvalued. So it's in a sense symmetric in both directions. So that's where the 1412 and the 205 came in is they came from looking at the 60th percentile of my value judgments. And I put in those as automatic, you know, automatic limit order simply because I didn't want to be the one pulling the trigger because who knows where I'd have been inclined to do it. I might have you know, covered my Amazon position at 1750 saying I made a lot of money. Why keep going with this position? I did lose some flexibility from doing that. You might say this is the reason I did not make as much money as I could have on Amazon. And this is it's entirely possible that these autopilot rules you know, leave money on the table. But in my experience, I've found these rules to help me more often than they've hurt me. The second intrinsic value lesson is a pushback that I'm going to do against some people's notion of intrinsic value. At least in the minds of some investors, intrinsic value is a constant. It's timeless. Once you value something, that value never changes. I've never understood this concept. Intrinsic value, in my, at least from my perspective, is something that should change. Why should it change? Because you get new information coming out about the company. Not only the form of earnings reports and dividend announcement, but also new stories about the company, new management and acquisition and divestiture. Every time new information comes out about a company, the intrinsic value should change. Now, there's another reason intrinsic value changes. When you do an intrinsic valuation of a company, built into your intrinsic valuation, our estimates you've used of the price of risk in the market, default spreads, equity risk premiums, and to the extent that those numbers change, your intrinsic value should change. Now, let me use my Apple and, and Amazon short sales to illustrate this concept. I valued Apple and Amazon right after their most recent earnings report on September 21st of 2018. There have been no new earnings reports since then. So there's been no financial disclosures. There have been news stories. Obviously, these companies are in the news. But none of these news stories, in my view, are consequential enough to have shifted the value of either company dramatically. There have been news stories about the China problems and how they might affect Apple's supply chain. But none of these stories are big enough, in my view, to change value. So you think, so the value is going to be the same? Well, not necessarily, because the last two months have been fairly traumatic ones for the market, right? The market, especially in October, was down significantly. And if you remember, I did a post on how much the equity risk premium in the market shifted just in October. November has been a, has been a volatile month, but the equity risk premium has, and, and the equity risk premium moved during the course of the month. But the bottom line is the equity risk premium on September 21st of 2018 that I used to do my valuation was about 5.08%. The equity risk premium, the price of risk in the equity market at the end of November 2018 was 5.68%. That's a 0.6% jump in the price of equity risk, which makes sense. Markets become more volatile. Investors are more scared. I revalued Apple and Amazon with that higher equity risk premium. So just to show you how much the equity risk premium has changed, take a look at this table. That's an extension of the table that I posted last month of the equity risk premium by day in October. Take a look at how volatile it was and take a look at November and you can see the 5.68% is what I used to revalue the two companies. The effect on value was relatively mild. I mean, for Apple, the value went from $200 from $200 down to $197. For Amazon, the value went from $1,255 down to $1,210. So the value effect was um, to 1000 uh, but the, the value effect was relatively small. But the price changed dramatically. And that's the thing to remember. For those of you who are concerned that value changes over time, remember, if you're an investor, price changes even more. And that's what gives you the opportunities to buy and sell. In the case of Apple and Amazon, the price change has been pretty dramatic. With Apple, the stock went from being significantly undervalued 
I'm sorry, significantly overvalued on September 21st, 2018 to significantly undervalued on, uh, on November 30th of 2018. And it, 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 to the extent that my, my judgments are driven by my comparison of value to price, not by value itself or by price itself, the stock went from being a short sell to a buy. Where Amazon remained overvalued, but it's much less overvalued now than it was two months ago. So it's not a vindication of my value, but it's such a suggestion that both value and price change and your job as an investor is to keep track of both numbers. Which brings me to my next point. If you look at Apple, I have, I, I've tracked stock now for about seven years, almost every three months. I mean, I've revalued the stock every three months and I've been comparing the price. And with, this is a stock where I've bought the stock four times and I've sold it four times in the last seven years. So let me take that back. I bought it four times and I've sold it three times in the last seven years. And you can see why. My story for Apple as a company has not changed dramatically over the last seven years. It's basically been a slow growth cash machine that derives most of its profits from one product, the iPhone. That's a story I told in 2012. It's still the story I'm telling in 2018. It's a company that's shown much more persistence in its profit margins than I expected. So its value has drifted up. But over that same period, the market's been almost manic depressive with the stock. What do I mean by that? Well, after every good iPhone introduction, people seem to think it's become a growth stock again. They push the price up too much. And after every mild disappointment or even a strong disappointment, they, they assume that this is the end for the iPhone franchise. They sell the stock off. So the stock price overshoots after good news. It, un, it, it overshoots up after good news. It overshoots down after bad news. And to me, that's been a source of opportunity because since my story, and I'm not saying it's the right story, it's been more consistent. It's led me to find Apple to be undervalued four times over the last seven years, which has been the, the times I've bought, and overvalued three times, which is the times I've sold. So this is part of a, a, a bigger topic of price versus value that we might come back to in a future, in a future session. Intrinsic value lesson four. Okay? You're often told again, this is all, and this is something you read often in value investing books that you have to have a long time horizon. In fact, one lesson, one widely quoted precept in value investing is that you should buy good companies and just forget about them, just hold them in the portfolio, in your portfolio for the rest of eternity. I've never understood this. I mean, if you buy something because it's undervalued, shouldn't you sell it if it's overvalued? And if that happens in three days after you bought it, why shouldn't you hold for the next 30 years? In fact, by holding it for a longer period, aren't you going to give up profits? Because that stock might very well give up all the gains you saw. So to me, a long time horizon is something you should go into with in an investment, but you shouldn't be forced to hold on to it. I mean, let me use my Apple um, investment as my example. In, on September 21st, when I found it overvalued, I put in that limit short sale, which happened by the by early October. I I, I was had a had a short position Apple, which I was willing to hold for a long period, but didn't have to, because with my automated cover at 205, that happened about four weeks later. I I barely held Apple. And at 175, the stock looks undervalued to me. I'm buying the stock. I'm willing to wait a long time period, but I'm not required to wait a long time period. If the stock jumps back up to 220 in in six weeks, I'm going to sell. I'm, I know that I might have to pay more in capital gains taxes, but I have to stay internally consistent. And my intrinsic value lesson five is as I look back at this experience, I mean, part of me wants to pat myself on the back for timing the short sale on Apple so well and you know, getting in a at its peak. But the other part of me reminds me that I covered my short sale much too quickly and that with Amazon, by not covering at 1420, I might face a world of pain in the future. That said though, I have to remember that what, what brought me to this party is I'm, I believe in value. And if I believe in value, I have to stay true to that philosophy, even if it means leaving money on the table as I have with Apple, or perhaps losing money with Amazon. It's a price I have to be willing to pay to have my philosophy. So here's the bottom line. 
as investors, we're quick to claim credit for our successes and blame others for our weaknesses, and I'm no exception. Part of me wants to lay claim to this, to, the, to being having been successful on this investment, but I know better. This looks like pure luck to me, and here's why. If you think, if you go back and read my September post on why I was short selling Amazon in particular, I said that was because I foresaw, you know, pushback from governments, from regulatory agencies. Yeah. None of that has happened in the last two months. So if the stock has dropped, it couldn't be because of the catalyst I saw happening. So I'm inclined to believe that this was pure luck. With Apple, I have a longer history, but even with Apple, nothing in the last two months would lead me to believe that it was somehow my value judgment that drove this process. So I'm going to bank the profits. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth, but I'm not going to walk away with some inflated sense that I'm a market timer now because I, I know I'm terrible at timing. I was before this, uh, this episode. I would remain so after this episode, but it's better to be lucky than good. Yeah. And I wish you the same luck. Thank you very much for listening.